like a, a paranthropus. I'm going to simplify things a little bit by saying, let's just call them Australopithecines. And this chart that I've got, or this timeline that I've got, which starts at Sahelanthropus chidensis, goes to Aurora and to Genesis, then Ardipithecus, and then it starts to get more complicated with Australopithecus. That's what I want to focus on and simplify that for you. What you'll see in this timeline is there's actually two major branches of Australopithecines. And that includes uh, some of these name confusions like Kenyanthropus um, and, and, uh, and Paranthropus. But let's simplify this. There are two types of Australopithecines. Those are the robust Australopithecines and the gracile Australopithecines. Now, if you know what those words mean, robust means thick and strong and powerful and fully formed, right? Gracile, as the name suggests, are more graceful, thinner. We're talking about bone structure, especially here, uh, more elongated um, and uh, less thick and strong. So you have the the, Australop the you have Australopithecines are a genus, but amongst them you have two kind of branches emerging, the robust and the gracile. Now, which of those two do you think humans are more closely related to? And which of those do you think are our competitors? I'll give you the answer. The robust Australopithecines seem to have been a competitor. And we'll come to some of the evidence of why that is. The robust Australopithecines seem to have been survived by developing physical capabilities that they were, in, they were investing. Like I said, everything in nature has a cost. So what do you spend your resources on? Do you spend it on uh, the ability to get and process nutrition that helps you to survive? Or do you find another solution other than equipment, right? So a robust Australopithecine is developing very big bone structure. And they were, their teeth now had lost their canines and they had developed teeth fairly similar to ours, but often much, much larger. So they had big snouts that came out uh, because they had to fit all those teeth into their face. And their diet was probably things like hard shelled seeds and nuts and grasses. And they had to crush them. So they had specially adapted teeth to crush these hard fibrous and chewy foods. And they also had a uh, muscle structure that would make the, their jaw compress to do that. In some cases, the hyper-robust, and this is where uh, things like Kenyanthropus, is, uh, is it, is it a, not an Australopithecine? Um, Kenyanthropus is also often called um, uh, the, uh, the, the, uh, uh, sorry, the uh, Platyops is a, uh, which you can see on your on your uh, slideshow is an, is a robust form, and uh, the discoverers of Kenyanthropus call it a different genus, but many anthropologists call it Australopithecus platyops. So they say no, it's not a different genus. It's the it's still an Australopithecus, but it's a, just a different species. So I'm not going to get into the discussion about what this anthropologist says as opposed to this anthropologist, but it's part of the same trend. This was a competitor to the gracile Australopithecines. So uh, the, um, sorry, Platyops was the, uh, was a gracile, apologize. So Australopithecus Platyops uh, or Kenyanthropus platyops was a gracile, and that was one strategy. There's also um, Australopithecus afarensis, 
Australopithecus um, uh, anamensis, Australopithecus um, africanus, um, and then you have some South African forms as well uh, that start to, to emerge, uh, Ethiopica, um, and then um, you also have Robustus, um, uh, Boise, which is a hyper-robust, um, and uh, Sediba, which is also a, a, um, a, a strange South African form that's slightly more gracile. But let's get back to um, simplifying things. So Australopithecus platyeps, or otherwise known as Kenyanthropus, is one gracile form that's going off in this direction. And you have uh, Anamensis, Afarensis, Ethiopicus, uh, Africanus, uh, going off in this other robust direction. Now, what were the gracile um, Australopithecines doing? So, um, the robust I talked about, they were developing big, strong chewing muscles to get that nutrition. Um, that allowed them to outcompete other creatures that may not have been able to process that kind of food, including uh, um, gracile Australopithecines. Some of the hyper-robust actually developed what are called... Um, sagittal crests to which uh, which are very similar to a chimpanzee and a, a gorilla skull that your muscles attach to this bony protuberance that goes runs the length of like a fin up your skull and muscles attach to it to provide a really powerful um, uh, bite but the gracile australopithecines didn't develop that they didn't develop very strong bones very strong muscles, they never got that sagittal crest. They had flatter faces. Platyops actually means flat face. And then you have the uh, another later form of uh, Australopithecine called Australopithecus garhi, which is also a gracile Australopithecus. So how were they surviving? Well, they weren't investing as heavily in their bones and their muscles and their, their toolkit in their faces. What they were investing in instead was slightly larger brains. And this is, uh, if you look at this chart, um, this, uh, this timeline, you'll see that that line that goes from uh, Platyops to Garhi then extends further into Homo habilis, Homo erectus, and eventually Homo sapiens. So, that is the simplification. You've got the pre-Australopithecines that are emerging as hominins, some of which may be our ancestors, some of which may not. From Ardipithecus, the latest of those pre-Australopithecines, almost certainly emerged this multiple strategies, multiple species of surviving in the Australopithecines, but two major branches. One are the robust, and what are the gracile? The gracile started to use their brains to survive rather than their muscles. And that's what we're going to start looking at uh, next. So we'll pause right here and we'll come back in just a moment.